Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and it's been a while, but we're back with The Evil Within. The Consequence, Episode 4, where we are chasing after Leslie, who is becoming more and more Ruvik. We've now fired and shot Joseph, as well as, you know, falling through the ground with Sebastian. So I don't know exactly where we are now, but we should be getting close to Beacon. This might be the end of the consequence, this episode. I mean, we are here in Beacon. Oh shit. He's too far gone. I've gotta stop him. And of course, we are still unarmed. We never did find another gun. Alright, so we got three haunted, it looks like. And we're gonna have to stealth past these individuals. But, uh. Unfortunately, I do kind of lack what they are, which is patience. Mosey on over here. It looks like there is a shortcut, or is this just a hiding spot? Yeah, this is just if you get caught. I wish Kidman could go maybe a little faster when crouching for these parts. I mean, you can make it, but it always feels like you're just barely doing it. Oh, fuck, I flashed the flashlight. Okay. That's not what they saw, though. That was just them reacting to the bottle. Almost saw me. He's gonna come over here. Uh, I don't have anywhere to go. Nothing to see here, chap. The other one. Okay, so if he turns away, I should be able to get behind the desk. Okay, good. He didn't. Oh, well, he's starting to turn. I was gonna say, he didn't peripheral spot me. Now, can I hop this desk? I don't think I can. I think it's a little too. Yeah, it's a little too wide. I'm just gonna slink around here, just in case there's actually something back here. Eh, it just looks like some dead nurses. Dressed the same as Margaret, which makes sense, because she's supposed to look like she belongs in Beacon. Alright, uh, I need to get through here. You gonna, you gonna lock the door or just hold your hand over the lock? No, I guess you can't really unlock that. What are you afraid of? What could haunt you so? What could you need that only we could be the ones to fill it? Was your waste of life something you wished to return to? Are you not grateful for what we've done for you? We let you into our circle. We gave you a new life. Why will you turn your back on us? Why will you not stand with us? <laughs> I suppose the question is, is our final confrontation going to be with Ruvik or the administrator? Or both? No! Shut up and get out of the way! Okay, there's a Mobius symbol there. 
So we're definitely not in the same area of beacon now. We've warped. Is that a note? No, that's just cover. Well, there's Leslie. I guess we're in the morgue? To... Do mental hospitals, you know, psychiatric hospitals actually have morgues? That seems kind of grim. The patients are dying when connected to the machine? What are you implying, Jimenez? After what you did to him, now all of this is just conjecture. But it's as if Ruben's consciousness remains trapped inside Stem, and he's attacking anyone attempting to enter. This is inexcusable. We need to get around this. We can't have come all this way for nothing. Ruvik. He was in Stem all along. Well, he's not gonna get me. I thought if we just stuck his brain as the central server of the machine, he wouldn't be in it anymore. I don't know, for but all that the... Leslie? What makes him special? Leslie was not always like this. He became catatonic after a traumatic experience as a child. His family was murdered in front of him. The data would suggest that brainwave synchronization with Ruben correlates to specific trauma. In this case, Ruben's own loss of family. This will not do. We need something else at the core. Something more acceptable to a whole range of people. I guess we never did really find out why Leslie was the way he was. So he synchronizes with Ruvik because his family was murdered. Ruvik's sister burned up and went into a coma, and then he murdered his parents, so I guess it's just the sister thing that's the crossover. This very solid plastic sheet. I suppose I should just turn my flashlight on instead of holding it up. Is that a... no. Okay, I thought that was a crawl space. What do we got here? Oh, another tape. They grow impatient with our progress and demand briefings on the development process. At first stressing the results, but now they work off a timeline based on their needs. Typical bureaucrats. I've been pushing Ruben, but he's retreated further, doing his research at home and refusing to come to the lab unless it's directly working on our STEM prototype. I am feeling uneasy, and no doubt Mobius is looking on us with question. I still have to wonder if, like, Ruvik really did show up, you know, to the lab and whatever in his, like, horror movie outfit of, like, burned lab coat. Like, do you think he took a regular lab coat and just kind of, like, cinched it up and cut it to make it fit his grotesque appearance? You can tell me there's nothing hidden under these stairs? Of course there is. We got Haunted Sebastian. I'm gonna say that the environments in Kidman's two campaigns are a little too much of this, you know, kind of generic laboratory look, which I get that she's kind of like exploring the background stuff, you know, the Mobius side of things, so she's gonna see more of this, but, you know, you did jump around locations a fair bit as Sebastian. So you can never really say that the environment was too much of the same. Okay, that's like not even a body bag. It's like a melted down body. 
There doesn't seem to be anything in this room. The dramatic music is still playing like something's going on, though. Nope. We need someone rational inside STEM. Potentially that person could neutralize Ruben. I mean... Ruvik. With my knowledge of the system, I may be of some... Absolutely not. We can't afford you complicating this any further. We will prepare one of our own. Sending someone inexperienced, we... We can't even be sure they can come back. Then it will need to be someone... Expendable. Expendable. So that's how you see me. And I trusted you. I mean, it seems like pretty much anyone is expendable to Mobius if they're not currently doing something for them. So do they like build a whole mock-up of the STEM system that they put in the lighthouse? Also, I was gonna say, is that a uh, fusion core there, that little one? This just seems like I'm clearing out the, like, Mobius influence and showing what Ruvik's version of Beacon looks like. You know, with the corpse basement and everything. What the hell? Oh, yeah. Where am I now? Pretty much exactly where I was thinking. So this is where the... I believe it's the sadist? was. You know, the one I had to run away from as Sebastian at the start. Sebastian was here? I wonder if we're gonna have to sneak by him again. I didn't do that so well <laughs> when I first did that. Not even in the first impressions. Well, I'd say especially in the first impressions. I did a terrible job of getting away from this guy. Oh, there's this tool shop. There's a hatchet. Which I'm guessing is not there because I can take it. It's just there for show. Maybe I should find out. I might need that. I can take that. Can't take the chainsaws, or the saws, or any of his other toys. Oh, there's a safe here, too. Okay, this is just one of the patterned ones. Which is useless without a... map. Usually one that only shows up when I... flashlight over it. Ceiling tiles, maybe? No. No, it's not in here. Uh, it's probably farther ahead, honestly. I'm not sure I actually care enough to <laughs> bother with it. No, oh, I had a prompt there for a second. No, oh, I think that was just enter cover. All right, let's just forget. Oh, maybe it's in. No, okay. Let's just forget about it. Because again, I don't have all the pieces of that note, so it's not worth collecting. 
the remaining ones. I'm not going to go back and get the rest. Doesn't this just lead to the spike blade floor room? Stand still for a second here. I almost ran out of stamina. Yeah, this room. This doesn't seem like it's getting us that much closer to the center beacon. <laughs> Do whatever you want. You're not going to stop me. All right. The old swappery do. At this point it seems like the administrator is maybe masking Leslie. Which doesn't benefit him, it just doesn't help us either. I also didn't even see the combination to that safe head. This fellow with a sawed-off shotgun. Obviously going to be a problem if he spots me. Since Kidman cannot take damage very well at all. That said, she can regenerate it very quickly. Alright. Enough of this shit. Thank you. Well, we did get his shotgun, however it's empty. So, maybe not enough of this shit yet. Okay, I see some shotgun shells. Okay, so we do need this to, I guess, get rid of these locks. Just wanna make sure I'm not missing anything. Also go this way. Hiding places. Bottle. Nope. Uh, apparently somehow I got a handgun back from that guy also. This says that it can only hold one shot. So I guess it fires both barrels. Alright. Gotta be careful here, because we don't have a lot of ammo. No. Oh. I was gonna try to finish him there. Oh, he's got a shotgun. And now I'm out of ammo. I don't suppose you had any... There we go. So, I don't have a lot of wiggle room here with the shooting. I mean, I could have... I could have just hidden there. Saved my ammo. Alright. It's a... It's a cool dead end. Again, maybe it's just supposed to be a hiding spot to get away from enemies. But it seems like it goes pretty far to be empty like that. I 
though I suppose we have already been here. This is a part of this kind of Mobius area that looks familiar, like this room specifically. So yeah, we still have to conserve ammo, just not as much. by, you know, sneaking around. Hmm. Can I stealth attack this guy? Kind of seems like he's equally facing both ways. I wonder if he'll automatically know where I am because he's angry. Okay, no. He's turning yellow, so he's... Suspicious now, but not completely aware. Dude, pick a direction. <laughs> I don't think I have a hat. Oh, no, I guess I do. I was gonna say I don't have a hatchet, but I picked up another one after I killed that shotgun guy. Nice spattering of very shiny gore. cabinet. Alright, so I guess the only way forward is forward. Okay, so I could shoot these guys. I could save my ammo. I hope there was nothing in that corner. I thought it kind of looked like there was a note. Okay, that's a dead end. So you are quite welcome to it. For a second, I thought the dramatic music was fading out, but no, it's still going. Oh boy. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to do the kick. So I guess trying to be uh, ammo conservative there is not going to work for me. Because I can't close the door behind me. Kidman, please pick up the ammo. Good twofer there. Anything back this way? Nope. Oh, hello. Oh, okay. I thought that was an ammo box. I saw, like, the shininess from the flashlight. Infinitely respawning corpsers. Uh, what are they called? Cadavers, I think was their name. See what I mean about the kick being useless? Alright, punched my high heel to death. I mean, like, the melee was an equal problem in the main game because you would punch a haunted and then they would stagger back and then immediately punch you back, so it was like kind of a waste.
This is dead end. Oh, Kidman, not a good time to get tired. Oh, that's Lisa. Let's definitely not go that way. I don't even know if there was like a copy Ruvik there or why there was Lisa hands, but I wasn't gonna stay to find out. Now we're in the Mobius Funhouse. The Tunnel of Stars, or whatever those things are usually called. Which is a rotating Very tube. Disappointing, kid. Such a simple mission, but still, you act out. Thankfully for us, there's always a backup plan. Not everything we give you is for your benefit. The infusion. What did you put in me? We needed to know if one of us could survive in the system. But we're not about to risk anyone of value. You were sent to carry us in with you. So here I am. I guess he's just no. like... It's Rubik. He's making all of this. She's like piggybacking on his... Or he's piggybacking on her signal or something so that he can be in STEM without being in STEM. He's like sitting at his desk right now, orchestrating these interactions. Please, roll up your sleeve. Whoa, now. That's a big syringe. Don't think you're putting that fucking thing in me. Miss Kidman, you agree to this. Don't forget that. Nothing we're doing is malicious. It's only proper protocol. You know what's proper protocol? Telling the person getting the fucking shot where the hell she is and what's the fucking point. Ow! Damn it! That hurt. Hey guys, what the fuck? Is anyone there? You give me a shot, then just let this weird video play on repeat? Some great fucking medical science you've got going on in here. About damn time. All right, can I go now? Not right now, Miss Kidman. How are you feeling? Any headaches? Nosebleeds, perhaps? What? No. But I do feel a little floaty. Almost like I'm underwater. That's consistent with the effects of the compound. We just have one last part of this test to partake in. Then you will be free to go. Sure. Go for it, I guess. Good. I will now ask you a series of questions. You will answer them while watching the images in front of you. You will not look away from the screen. Do you understand? Yes. Question number one. Have you ever felt abandoned by the ones you trusted? And those are the questions she was asking that we've kind of been hearing popping up throughout this DLC. You gave yourself to us. You made the choice of your own free will. We were the only ones who cared. The ones who took you from your useless life. We gave you a reason to exist. And how do you thank us? By destroying our work? Where will you go when you leave us, kid? Who will have you? Why would you abandon the cause? Who are you trying to save? A world that didn't care about you in the first place? The administrator is turning into Slender Man once you've picked up six or seven pages. Alright. Getting close to the core. Thought the game almost crashed there when I said that. Alright, can't open that door. Not that I really need to. I guess I have the handgun. 
but they're not going to give me any ammo for it. Oh, maybe it'll just show up in a cutscene. Visible haunted. I wonder if we're gonna have to shoot a few of them. They're coming for me. I don't know how, but they know everything. They even know about Leslie. There's no use hiding this anymore. I'll enter the system, and my return will be proof that all of this was worth it. I can, of course, convince them that it wasn't for me, it was for their goals. There are just the final tweaks left. Once I finish, I will put Leslie in the stem with myself and activate it. The wireless signal should ring out in the near distance. I can't speak for those unfortunate to be around, but like I always said, the ends will justify the means. Finally, Mobius will see that I am one of their chosen ones. Reuben is but a ghost. I am their savior, their plan is nothing without me. So he had no idea who was going to get pulled in. He's just like, well, I'll just turn on my stem wireless receiver. Suck anybody in nearby. But Mobius knew he was going to turn it on, so they sent Kidman and Co. to be within range of the signal, I guess. Classic defend the elevator scene. You know, they're acting a lot like Ganados right now. They run right at you, and then when they get close, they... Well, I was gonna say they stop and slow down, but I guess they don't always do that. Fear is the mind killer, you after all. The first. You will bow under this fear, or you will die. You will serve as an example for what we will become. Leslie, wait! Don't go in there! Hey, look, it's me. This is me. I'm connected. Just like everyone else. I'm getting out of here. See, this is the thing I'm confused about. If it was a wireless thing that pulled them in, shouldn't they be, you know, still sitting in a cop car somewhere? Like, who physically put them into the pods? We've got Connolly, who's been dead for a while. I'm trying to tell if his eyes are open. We've got Sebastian, who's looking surprisingly peaceful. We've got Jimenez, who is also dead. I guess that's why he slumped over. Leslie. Oh, 
kind of looked like his eyes were open. I mean, he has a heartbeat when you walk over here. And Joseph, who is assumed to be dead by this point, but he's looking all right. <laughs> I was curious about that one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the the joke ending if you just shoot Rubik's brain, which was spoiled by an achievement. Ugh, what the fuck? <laughs> but no, time refused to change. Was it, or I guess the past refused to change? So yeah, it's just an Easter egg. Sebastian, get away from him. Sebastian, listen to me. Stop. Your interests are the same as ours. Look, I get it. You're not just some rookie detective, and this is not just some ordinary kid. You killed Joseph and you shot me. So right at this moment, that's enough reason for me not to trust you. You're a good man. That's why See, I... she says our, but she's talking about her neat interests. It matter anymore. If you know who this kid is, if you know anything, you know why he can't be allowed to live. Bullshit. It's Ruvik. He's the one that... It... Come here, my boy. It's really clear why taking over Leslie made him turn into a monster inside STEM. I mean, he could have just left at that point. You failed. We gave you an order and you failed. No. None of this is real. You aren't real. You want to believe that, but I'm right here. I've been with you this whole time. Agent Kidman. But I'm not afraid of you anymore. That just shows how little you understand. You should be very afraid. We have you, kid. And you know the consequences for failure. We won't let you just leave us. You fulfilled what little use you have. This world is a prison for you to run in. Fuck you. I've had enough of this. I'll kill you right here. Alright, so he is the final boss. Um... That's handy. All right, which one of you is the real Slender Man? I 
guess you don't really know until he attacks. Because, I mean, most of them don't do anything. Trapped in a maze of geometry with two of myself. You're going to die, kid. I need space to reload. <laughs> I also need ammo. Teleported too fast and too far. <laughs> she went right past me. Now I wonder if I'm actually supposed to be fighting them or if he's still hiding in here somewhere. I mean, these ammo caches do seem to be continuing to appear, so... You're a fool to try and fight us, kid. Well, looks like I got one of them. Ah, oh, damn, there goes the ammo. Quite a different aesthetic of Final Boss than the main game. Instead of a meat design, we've got this, uh, like, crypto it's design. A shame you'll never see what we accomplished. So I just gotta get keep getting closer while avoiding his brick wall attack. You think you can run, but you're ours. Hey look, I found my handgun again, that I already had, but this one has bullets. You think you've won, but have you? 
You don't know me. I'm stronger than you think. Are you sure enough in yourself? Sure enough to face the responsibilities of your actions? <gasps> Yeah, he looks pretty dead. How the hell? Agent Kidman, we've got him from here. How long has it been? 37 minutes since the first pulse. How did we get here? Felt like I was in there for five what to six hours. Uh, just give me a minute. I need to get Myra. my head straight. Myra, we need you back here. All right, but we've got word he wants a debriefing as soon as you get back. I guess I was right. Sebastian's wife Myra. joined Mobius. She got too deep and they recruited her. And she was the agent that Kidman was talking to the whole time. So this one's weird because he saw her outside of the system already. Before he fought Rubik, if I remember correctly. They were right. I failed. But they didn't count on you. I owe you one. Welcome back to the real world, Sebastian. I hope you find what you're looking for. I mean, she's over there, but, you know. I'm sure you'll find that out someday. <laughs> Leave that one. And those two. They're not going anywhere. No one is. So she's talking about Sebastian and also the two dead ones. But what about what about Joseph? He doesn't fall into either of those two numbers. Did Mobius take him with them? Because I think it's pretty clear that he's not dead because they would have just said he was. Or, you know, made it obvious. But it seems like they kind of dance around whether he's dead or not. So, I assume he at least gets mentioned in the sequel. But yeah, so... A question there. Did Kidman kill the administrator? And someone else is heading Mobius. Because I know that Kidman is still working at Mobius in the second game. You know, I haven't really spoiled any of the sequel for myself, really. But I do know that Kidman is working at Mobius, and she's kind of like your, your Agent Hunnigan, you know, your voice over the radio for most of the game. But alright. That's the end of Kidman's side of things. So we're getting pretty close to being done with The Evil Within, the first game. Because all we have left is the Executioner, which should be a refreshing experience after all of Kidman's stealth. Since we get to just run around as the, the Keeper and, you know, smash other monsters with his hammer. Which should be fairly short. I know that one's not nearly as long as, like, either of these Kidman chapters. But yeah, so, you know, there were some frustrations in the DLC. They're maybe a little too heavy on the stealth. And, you know, Kidman is kind of frustrating sometimes with how fragile she is. You know, she can't run very good. She basically takes two hits to die. And if you get hit once, you can't run, so usually you get hit again. But there's some cool stuff in there. I like the administrator fight. And, you know, the 
fuck this. I'm just gonna use a shotgun now. Thing. The shade was cool, but I guess didn't really have a central purpose. It was just like, oh, we need some kind of antagonist for Kidman. So how about sexy legs and a spotlight? But yeah, I'm glad we're done with that. Uh, it's been, what, almost a year since I started Evil Within? Since I did it in October of last year, 2017? So yeah, we're coming up on a year since I started this LP. It's about time to be done. Alright, so two and a half hours, not too bad. Though I don't know if that counts all of the deaths, but let's, before we finish up this episode, I just want to quickly jump into the Executioner. Not actually start it, but, you know, just go into the menu. Alright, so looking a little different. I believe this one mostly, as it said, takes place within the Victoriano estate. So there's not a lot of jumping around as far as I know. But yeah, we'll take a look at the Executioner next time, and then we'll be uh, ready to wrap up for Evil Within. And maybe uh, take a little look-see at the sequel? Hmm? Anyhow, I've been Shadefire, this is the Evil Within, and this has been The Consequence, which we've now completed. See you all next time, folks, those who are still sticking around.